time and all experiences, you will know your father and yourself. It's, it really comes down to purpose, that this world was made in hatred, this world was made in anger, this world was made as a, a place where God could enter not, Jesus tells us. So this entire projected cosmos of time and space is a hiding space, a distracted device from knowing yourself as the Christ, from knowing yourself as the beloved of God. And everything that's invested in of this world is an attempt to not know who you are. You think about those minds, the world was made in hate, and also that the world was made as a place where God could enter not. Actually, he precedes it by saying the world was made as an attack on God, a place where God could enter not. That's the full quote. And you won't even hear, like we talk about Advaita Vedanta, a lot of non-dualistic teachings throughout the centuries, very beautiful teachings, but they don't actually come out and say it that way. The world was made as an attack on God, a place where God could enter not. Um, that is just an emphasis again on that the world is a distracted device and if you do anything to reinforce the distracted device or the duality of the world, then you, you cover over the oneness that you truly are. You can't keep trying to use mechanisms of of duality and think that you're going to know oneness. And yet there's something intuitively inside you that already knows that the oneness is real. That's what God is about. God is one. We are one. We are one in truth. But the duality covers it over. <coughs> Just recently I, I showed some friends in Sweden this, uh, this little video clip on YouTube and it was it was the Pink Panther teaches non-duality. Has anyone seen that one? <laughs> it was, you know, the Pink Panther, the cartoon, yeah. with Pink Panther and then the inspector, and every time the inspector is attempting to paint something, the Pink Panther's there painting pink. Uh, regardless <laughs> of what he does, he paints half of the door, the Pink Panther paints the other half. He paints over the Pink Panther's pink, the door flips around, it's, it's all pink. Uh, he, the whole thing is back and forth with the Pink Panther showing really the impossibility of duality and in the background while all this humorous uh, cartoon is going on, it's Alan Watts, some of you have heard of Alan Watts, speaking on pure non-duality. You know, that, that in order to have a winner you have to have a loser, in order to have a loser you have to have a winner. All the opposites of this world that you couldn't believe in one of the opposites without believing in the other. The dualistic world is the projection of a split mind that believes two things. That love is real and that fear is real. And that's what this world is. It's an attempt to, in psychological terms, it's called dissociation. To, have, to hold on to two thought systems that actually are irreconcilable that actually love and fear don't have a reconciliation point. And you can believe that they both coexist, and you can see in this world there's a lot of that belief that, that there is such a thing as love, but there always, also is such a thing as fear. The belief that there is good, but that there is evil. And if you look at that, you go deeper into it, you can see that, that these dualistic beliefs even positive thinking and negative thinking. How many of us have grown up to realize we need to try to get into more positive thinking? And what we're learning from that little Alan Watts uh, Pink Panther clip is that the positive <coughs> thinking and the negative thinking both seem to be opposites, but they exist within the belief that opposites are possible. That's what this world is. It's the belief that opposites are possible. 
As long as you have a belief that opposites are possible, the positive thinking will never overtake the negative thinking because of the belief that both of them have a reality. You, in the end, that's right, you have to forgive positive thinking. You're not going to hear this in many workshops. <laughs> but I'm telling it to you straight, if you're going to reach a state of pure unification and oneness, you have to forgive the positive as well as the negative. You have to forgive the good as well as the bad. If you can come to that state of seeing the impossibility of the duality, you will see that you've never ever really done anything wrong in this lifetime, and you've never done anything right. Jesus says, everyone who seems to come here makes a belief system up, and somewhere deep inside they always are counting the good and the bad, hoping what, that the good outweighs the bad. <laughs> Like you're going to reach the pearly gates at one point, and you're going to get this presence that's going to say, okay, let's tally it up now, you know, and you hope <laughs> that you've got just one more <coughs> dot, at least one more dot on the, one more mark on the good side than the bad. Because there's still, if you believe in a dualistic world, uh, one of those beliefs is punishment. In heaven there's no punishment, in nirvana there's no punishment, but, but if you believe that there's wrong and a right and there's going to be a consequence for the wrong, then you can project that belief in punishment even onto God. And that's what, you know, traditional Christianity has done, where we have heaven and hell and, you know, it always struck me kind of interesting that this belief that that Jesus had to die on the cross, you know, as a punishment, you know, as a ransom, is the word that they used when I was growing up. It had to be a ransom paid to God for the sins of mankind. Ransom, is that the kind of God you would want to spend eternity with, you know, that to know whatever you seem to do wrong, even if you made errors, that there's going to have to be some kind of ransom paid for all the errors. Ransom is such a big word too. You see when somebody, somebody's kidnapped, and they're asking for millions of dollars, that's what, like to pay the ransom. This is like a ransom for the sins of mankind. And we're back to this thing of, the problem is the dualistic thinking and project it out so that it seems to be acted out so there's good things and bad things in the world. It's projected out to behavior. You know, when we're growing up, be on your good behavior. Behavior, you know. The songs we have, we have a song in, in the, and probably over here, it's a famous song about Christmas. He knows you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're He knows when you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Oh! <laughs> Even in Christmas songs, it's supposed to be a celebration, Christ Mass, we're supposed to be celebrating Christ, love, unconditional love, innocent love, eternal love, and there's a song, so be good for goodness sake, you see it's all projected out, all morality is the same projection of the split mind into the morally good and the morally bad. Oftentimes. I hear the word uh, balance when I, I hear people talk about spirituality. And balance is still another dualistic idea. Whenever you hear somebody tell you, you know, well, they, they listen to your story, they listen to your, you know, your complaints or whatever you've got going on and they, they give you that, I'm going to give you wise advice now. You've got to balance your life. Well, balance implies duality. Balance implies something and something else. And what I'm talking about now is pure non-duality. You don't have to even balance your life uh, to live a happy life. You, you have to come to an awareness that there is nothing to balance between. That as long as you believe in the ego, which sponsors the idea of balance, it will forever be trying to have you compromise and have a little bit of heaven and a little bit of hell. A little bit of fear and a little bit of love. You know, balancing, you know, like 
don't get too fanatical with all this unconditional love stuff. You know, you've got to mix in a little bit of hatred and throw in a few scraps of fear and guilt, you know. Don't think you can just have pure, absolute innocence and absolute joy. <coughs> innocence. I played this song right before we started uh, by a friend in Sweden, Kattis, called Innocence. And innocence is a good thing to look at because in the world of duality, there are the innocent and then there are the guilty. And you couldn't have, in that world of duality, you couldn't have guilt without innocence or innocence without guilt in that dualistic thinking. There's no innocence in this world. Uh, it's another reason why we have to start to see the world as a distractive device that you have to let go of. Because if you want to be experiencing yourself as purely innocent, which is really natural, that's the way God created us, is pure innocence, then if you identify with the world and the things of the world, you will not know your innocence in awareness. It's still there, you know, nothing can take away your innocence because God gave you innocence in creation, so you, nothing you can think or do or say or make can change eternal love, can change that innocence, but as long as you keep identifying with the ego belief system and the projected world of the ego, then that innocence is out of awareness. It's pushed out.